Hello, one and all. This is Taylor, and today we're going to get back to the basics by learning the language of automation. Here at Sweet Dash, we are obsessed with automation. As I've said in previous videos, if something can be automated, we're going to make it happen. If you spent any time inside of Sweet Dash, I'm sure you've come across a few terms that may have left you a bit confused. Well, rest assured, because today I'm going to teach you all you need to know about the keywords surrounding the art of automation and give you examples of each to really help you understand them fully. Let's start with the term dynamic. It refers to data or an image that is automatically generated or populated depending on who is logged into the portal. Simply put, it makes the super admin's life a heck of a lot easier. Take, for example, the use of a dynamic data placeholder at the top of this portal page. Even if I have 100 plus contacts in my CRM, I can give them all a customized and personal experience without having to build 100 plus different portal pages. All thanks to dynamic data placeholders. In numerous spots throughout the platform, you will be given the option to drop in one of these dynamic data placeholders. Now these placeholders pull in data from a contact's profile collected during kickoff and update forms. The Sweet Dash platform comes stock with a few standard fields like name and email address, but don't get boxed in. Let your imagination run wild as you create various custom fields that can benefit your workflow. And even if it doesn't directly benefit your business, it never hurts to know what a contact's favorite ice cream flavor is. So find a way to work that in. Now, what about a target? Simply put, it's the user on the other end of a form or automation. Now, I know you've come across this when creating a kickoff form. So just remember, the target is the person filling out the form. Trigger and actions feel like the flagship terms for this particular lesson. So let's spend an extra moment on them. Actions are triggered automations that you control what they will do and when they will occur. The coolest thing about them is that they can be strung together to create a series of commands that can guide a user's experience and save you, the super admin, a bunch of time. What we're looking at here is a configure actions modal, something we also refer to as a checkpoint. These so-called checkpoints are the places that allow you to access the trigger action automation widget. Our advice is to start planning your workflows to include these checkpoints. Now let's start small. This is an example of something you could configure when editing a proposal. Once approved, the user will be converted to a client and the signed proposal and its information will be automatically converted to an invoice. Now that you have the basic concept down, let's take it a step further. Remember that the ability to trigger actions doesn't just take place inside of a configure actions modal. For example, let's take a look at some of the things you could do for a new contact completing a kickoff form. Wait class, instead of using the term contact, what could we have said? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Yep, the correct answer is now coming in from the back row, a target. Excellent. So you are listening. Okay, let's get back to it. If you were to bring in your unknown targets as a client, you could first assign them to a circle, then a series of events could be added to their calendar using an events generator. You could link them to a project and uh, even set them up with an onboarding flow. That's fancy. Because automations are the heartbeat of Sweet Dash, I'm gonna bend your ear with one more example before we move on. Here, I'm configuring actions that will occur once a contact approves an estimate. By default, an invoice will be generated. So let's look at what else we can trigger this checkpoint. We could automatically start a project using the project generator. We could send over a document ready for e-signing and cap it off by sending a file request for those important files that we will need to move forward. Hey, like always, these are just a few examples to get your brain juices flowing. Theoretically, there are endless possibilities when it comes to automating your business workflow. So don't be afraid to pump the brakes and spend some time in this area. I promise, in the end, it'll be worth it. Relative date. This is one we've all seen and most likely understand, 
but I want to be thorough. Simply put, this date is relative to the based on date, which in default configurations is the date in which something is created. A relative due date is not predefined. It's just a tool to help us define a date in the context of an automation. Although you will find the option to set up relative dates all across the platform, the easiest way for me to drive this concept home is looking at an invoice on-demand generator. When setting up this type of invoice, I can simply define how many days the user will have to pay the balance. I might not know when the invoice will be generated, but whenever it is created, the user will have 10 days from that point to pay the invoice. Make sense? Awesome. Now let's look at its brother. Based on date is a predefined date, but this can also be relative or dynamic. Confused? Don't be. The following example should help you understand what I mean. Let's say I need to apply a task template to an already created and ongoing project. The prompt will ask for a based on date. Because the tasks inside of the template are based on relative dates, you must define what this date will be. So you have the freedom to choose today's date, a date in the future, or a date in the past. This new based on date will affect when the task will be due for this particular project. Generators. Think of them as a factory with an assembly line. You will set up the factory with customized variables and instructions so that it is prepared to generate an end product when called into action. These are extremely helpful and will make your workflow more efficient because once you take the time to set one up, theoretically, you don't have to touch it again. It will keep spitting out what you asked it to based on the instructions you provided and the information provided during the automation. Let's take a look at generators and how they're used with projects, invoices, and events. Projects are made up of tasks. So when setting up a project generator, we need to first set up a task template. Remember that even though we don't yet know who the end user or the target will be when a template is applied to a project, the predefined task and phases are automatically generated, assigned to the appropriate user, and due dates are dynamically generated based on your settings. So, layman's terms, this prevents you from having to build a project from scratch every single time you need to create one for a user. Whew, what a time saver. Let's say I work with 10 different design clients during a typical month and ask for payment at the end of each month. If I were to set up accumulating generators, my staff and I could add billable items and timers to the appropriate accumulating generator throughout the month. And at the end of the month, invoices would be created automatically for each client without any further work on my part. You even have the option of automatically sending those invoices when they're generated. So say goodbye to the days of old when you may have forgotten to charge a client for billable hours. Generators have you covered. Project and invoice generators can be mighty helpful, but allow me the chance to blow your mind with event generators. Let's say you just made contact with a new lead and you don't want to forget to follow up. Now, if I were in your shoes, left to my own devices, I would simply forget. But if I were to set up an event generator, I would be automatically reminded of the appropriate times to circle back with my potential client. Or, using our design team example from earlier, you can set up the different meetings or appointments you will need in order to take a project from start to finish. Drop them into an event generator, and boom! Let Sweet Dash take care of the rest. We're going to let templates come right behind generators, since they go hand in hand. Sweet Dash defines a template as a pre-configured set of parameters or items. We've already touched on task templates and how they are used in project generators, but don't let that one usage get your mind boxed in. You can find some really helpful pre-made templates inside of our template library, which is hiding in your flyout menu. Here, you can find some fantastic launching pads for generating documents, such as contracts, and when creating new portal pages to wow your contacts. All right, I'm gonna wrap up our time together by defining one of my favorite features, a drip sequence. This falls under our marketing section and is defined as automated messages sent to a user that follow a sequence or predefined number of days within a cycle. Layman's terms? a great way to keep your name and product in front of potential consumers. 
picture that I am a trout fishing enthusiast and am promoting my trout fishing for beginners PDF in exchange for a user's email address. With the use of a kickoff form and a beautifully built drip sequence, I can deliver the initial PDF and then market future offerings to them through automated emails. For example, two days after the initial PDF exchange, an email is automatically fired off promoting the other products I have. One week later, an email is fired off promoting a big trout fishing trip that we're about to take, and so on. You could set this up once and literally never think about it again. It's like having an in-house marketing team constantly promoting your brand. Well, sweet mates, it's been a blast breaking down the building blocks of automation with you today. Like we always say, do the work, get your life back. And these are the tools that will help you do just that. 